Good evening, YouTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video. It is a Monday here in West Michigan. It is April the 29th. It is 8.32 at night. It has been a cold, gray, wet, dismal day. And it looks like it's going to rain all week. But that's weather in spring. Like I've always tell people, springtime in Michigan is never, it's always rainy and gray and wet. And sometimes you have a sunny day. But it doesn't really get sunny and warm until the end of May, June. Spring is not really, it's not sunny, warm weather most of spring in Michigan. So it's 8.33 at night. It's a Monday. This is a Monday Reads. Also, uh, I volunteered at the local library used bookstore, the Book Nook, Friday and today, Monday. And I got some books to show and what I read today and what I got. I got some books in the mail. Well, I got a book in the mail today. I got some CDs in the mail. So, yeah, as far as my diary... I, tomorrow is the last day of April 2019, the 30th. Monday, no, <laughs> Wednesday, this coming Wednesday is the 1st of May. And on Thursday, I have my yearly physical. So I have my May 2019 diary ready. Hope I'll live until May. You know, I could die tonight, I could die tomorrow. You never know. The world could come to an end. You never know. Life is full of mysteries. Have my uh, April 2019 diary. Today I ended on page 377 for the year 2019. I got my April the 30th diary ready to write in the morning if I wake up. I don't croak during the night. I have a, a journal title. No, I'm always looking for titles to my journal entries in my online diary. And I found one and I was reading something. Tomorrow, if I wake up, <laughs> the title of my journal entry in live journal Crooked Fingers will be The Illusion of Individual Freedom in the Pyramid of Global Order. <laughs> I like that one. So yeah, so I've been writing in my diary. Today, before I get to the used books, I read at the book nook today. Now this morning, I don't think I read anything. I think this morning, I don't know, I've been waking up in the mornings. Get my pen. I've been waking up in the mornings, last couple of mornings, I'm just kind of sick of everything. You ever get to that point where you feel just sick or you're just pissed? I'm just, I'm, I'm, suppose I'm a grumpy old man. I just feel kind of uptight and kind of just angry. I don't know what it is. But so this morning when I woke up, I, of course, when I wake up, my wife's already up in the living room having her morning devotions, reading her Bible and singing hymns and praying and all that. So, but this morning when I got up, yeah, I didn't write, I didn't read anything. I looked at a book I got in the mail, but I didn't read any of my religious books. I don't know. It's not that I don't think about spiritual things, but I do all the time. Because if you've been a Christian, as long as I have, you're always, the Bible is always in your mind. And you're always thinking about God and spirituality. And it's like, for example, somebody, um, I was talking to somebody at the book nook and we're talking about friendship and uh, no, it was somebody, it was somebody on, I commented in one of my videos about, no, I know what it was. It was an online diary I have in Diaryland. 
I ha I read this diary in Diaryland from a woman who lives in was across the lake in Wisconsin, and she was writing about making up a, a fantasy friend because she lives out in nowhere on this island and her neighbors she lives way out in the out in the nowhere in the country and she says i'm thinking about making up a fantasy friend <laughs> and she told her husband about that and he kind of looked at her kind of strange she said and said you're going to talk to this person this fantasy friend and the woman said yeah and her husband said kind of kind of looked at her but I wrote back and said, I sure, I mean, if you want to have a fantasy friend and think up somebody and talk to them and think about them, you know, why not? But then I said to her, I don't really have any friends. Now, I have my wife, I have my oldest son and his wife down the street, and little Cora and Josephine, and I have my son Josiah and his wife Hannah and Marika, and I have my daughter Bethany and her husband Andy and... Louisa, Margaret, and Jack, and those are the my family. But as far as a friend outside the family circle, I don't have any. But then it came to me, that old gospel hymn, what a friend that we have in Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus is my friend. That's what I'm trying to get at. I mean, I do have a friend. Uh, Abraham was called the friend of God. So there, we do have... I do have a spiritual friendship. Now, of course, Jesus is not only my friend, but he's my sovereign Lord. He's the King of glory. He's the Son of God. He's my Savior. He's my righteousness. He's my sanctification. He's my wisdom and all those things. So the point is, I'm always thinking spiritual things, even though I'm not reading the Bible or reading some spiritual book. So as far as uh, talking about at the book nook, I did pick up last Friday. I bought this. I'm I'm always buying Bibles. I I'm always you, you know I collect Bibles and and I found this really neat ESV study Bible English Standard Version. This is really a nice Bible. A great a great study Bible. As you all know, I'm doing. I'm still reading through the uh, the Epistle of Romans reading that commentary by Longnecker, by March Mammoth. I'm still doing that. But the man who did the Romans in this study commentary is, uh, his name is Thomas Snyder, and he did a really great uh, commentary on Romans. And so his notes on Romans are really good, if you like good, solid, evangelical understanding of the Epistle of Romans. He did it. And so I was kind of pleased with that because I, I really, I have uh, Thomas Snyder. He teaches at Southwest South Southern Baptist Seminary, and he's done a book on Paul the Apostle, uh, Pauline theology. He's done a book on New Testament theology. He's done really a, a lot of good books. So I got that at the Book Nook. Also, I picked up this little NIV compact Bible commentary by John H. Salhammer. I have his book, um, The Pentateuch as a Narrative, and I have his book, Introduction to the Old Testament. So it's, it's only it was a dollar. It's, it's a compact little commentary on the whole book of the Bible. And it's pretty, it's pretty basic, but if you want an overview of the whole Bible, it's, it's really, really worth having. I also picked up a couple of weeks ago, I haven't shown this, I like word books. <laughs> I like dictionaries, books on English grammar, punctuation, even though you can know, I don't know how to pronunciate, I don't know how to, I, I'm very un in, I'm not very articulate, but I like word books and I found this one at the book nook a couple of weeks ago, The Thinker's Thoracicus, Sophisticated Alternatives to Common Words by Peter E. Miser. I kind of looking at books about words. <laughs> a lot of the words that he quotes in here for, you know, sophisticated alternatives to common words, I can't pronounce them. <laughs> uh, they're just beyond my ability to pronunciate, but it's still kind of fascinating. The, all these words and language, and it's just really interesting. So, I found that.
And at the book nook today, I, went, I was reading uh, before. This is what I read at the book nook today. This is what I've been reading the last couple of days. I showed this in the video, French Exit, a novel by Patrick DeWitt. I've read half of this. It's okay. I'm, the more I read it, I'm getting kind of a little uncomfortable. Not uncomfortable. It's, I don't like the way, something about the way it's written kind of irritates me a little bit. But I probably will read it. I haven't really DNF it yet. And then I was reading at the book nook, uh, White, Brent, Easton Ellis. I really like this. Now, I don't agree with his ethics. I don't agree with some of the things that he writes. But I like the, some of the main... I know what he's saying in here, and I kind of agree with it. So I got this in the... Amazon delivered this book last night around 8 o'clock. And I, I was watching a booktuber... And she mentioned some books on psychedelics and psychedel uh, psychedelic consciousness. And she mentioned this book, The Timothy Leary Project, Inside the Great Counterculture Experiment by Jennifer Urich, forward by Zach Leary. So I, I ordered it. And she mentioned some other books I plan to buy. But as you all know, I was reading this D.C. Boyle's new novel, Historical Fiction, on Timothy Leary and the psychedelic movement in the early 60s. So, and plus I collect books on Timothy Leary and the psychedelic movement, books on psychedelic drugs and the 60s counterculture, or the beatniks, Andy Warhol, San Francisco during the 60s, counterculture. So I got that in the mail. Yeah, I like... I came across some other books on Amazon I didn't know about Timothy Leary I plan to to buy in the future. And what else? Oh, I got in the mail today a book I had to pre-order from Amazon UK. They didn't carry it in the United States. And it was the new novel by Jared Quebec, Only Americans Burn in Hell. <laughs> so I've been reading this today. As you know, I I recently read his this novel by him, The Future Won't Be Long, by Jared Quebec. I did a, a long review of this um, in one of my videos a, a while back. But so I've been reading this today. It's kind of a satire on American culture, the Trump presidency, kind of a satire on America media, its fascination with Marvel comic movies and. It's fascination with all kinds of things that are just kind of kind of silly. But, so I was reading that. I also got two CDs in the mail. I got this one last night along with that uh, Only Americans Burn in Hell by uh, Jarrett Kobeck. This is Neil Lofton's Blue with Lou. He's a, a guitarist in Bruce Springsteen band. He also plays with Bob Dylan and Neil Young, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of just straight, kind of, I don't know, kind of bluesy, kind of, kind of rock. It's okay. I like his, I like guitar, his guitar playing. And then I got this uh, death metal kind of ambient music by Death Feast, Mysteries of the Nocturnal Forest. I got that today in the mail. So now we cleared that off. These are the used books. I got these today at the book nook. I brought these home. The Red Phantom, Stalin's War on the Ukraine by Ample and Amplebum. I already have her her book. I got it oh a couple years ago. Iron Curtain, The Crushing of Eastern Europe by Anne Amplebum. She did a book uh, called, on the called the Gulag. The Russian prison system, which I don't have, which I'm looking for. But I got this one today, The Red Phantom, Stalin's War on the Ukraine by Anne Applebaum. As you all know, I'm reading on Stalin, the Bolshevik, Lenin, Trotsky, uh, reading uh, a Memoirs of America, not American, but uh, Memoirs of a Revolutionary by Victor Serge. And I've been reading the, his book, uh, 
Anarchists Never Surrender by Victor Serge, Essays, Polemics, and Correspondence on Anchor, Antar, Antar, was it? Anarchism, 1908 to 1938. Also, I picked up something I, I found out I already have, Butcher's Crossing, a novel by John Williams. So I'll put this in the roving, van, roving library in my van. And then I picked up last week, uh, I mentioned in the humanities tag, there was a question about a novel based on archaeology. And I mentioned when I was really young, I read a novel by James Missioner called The Source, and it came into the book nook. And I bought it. <laughs> And my wife said she read it when she was a teenager, too. So I read it. It's kind of like in the grand, story t grand storytelling style the signature James Michener dramatizes one of the most riveting and important developments in world civilization, the birth and full flowering of Judaism, beginning with a group of modern-day archaeologists digging at a site in Makor. Michener sweeps us back through time to the very beginning of the Jesus, not Jesus, Jewish faith, thousands of years before. Here is the entire history of the Jews, the first religions, the transition to monotheism, the life of the early Hebrews, and how they were persecuted, the impact of Christianity, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, the way to the founding of present-day Israel and the Middle East conflict. So I found that. And I found a, a novel by Ishiguro, The Buried Giant. I collect his writings. I, I've read, I think, one of his novels a couple of years ago. I think I read, oh, the, I read Never Let Me Go, or Remains of the Day, something like that. So I got him. Then I picked this book up. I don't know what it is. It's called Maxims by... La Rucha Frode. I don't know what this is. It just looked really interesting. It's just a bunch of maxims, like, um, and they're in French, but then they have the English translation. I don't know. It was only, you know, a dollar fifty. My wife was doing a the thrift store crawl, and she found this novel, which I not a novel, but it's nonfiction, which I have already in our library. Embracing Defeat, Japan in the Wake of World War II by John W. Dower, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, winner of the National Book Award. I have this already, so this will go in the roving library. And then I picked up at the book nook The Mediterranean and the Mediterranean World of, um, in the Age of Philip II by Fernand Brunel. This translated out German by uh, C.N. Reynolds. This is an abridged edition. So those are things I got at the book nook, things I'm reading. And so this stuff can go down the lower level. I can put all this stuff away, put stuff in the van, the roving library, and what I'm reading and what I'm listening to. Uh, Death Feast. Neil Lofkin, reading Only America's Only Americans Burn in Hell by Jerry Quebec. It's kind of like a, a satire on American politics and life. Uh, reading about uh, Anarchists Never Surrender. Reading uh, Brent Easton Ellis, White's, White. Reading French Exit by Patrick DeWitt. Reading D.C. Boyle's historical fiction on Timothy Leary, the early 60s psychedelic movement. Reading the Timothy, the Timothy Leary project. I'm just going to look at this. It's kind of nonfiction. It's just looking at Timothy Leary and his impact on culture. So that's about it in my book world. It's like somebody asked me. Do you read all the time? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be 67 years old in August, and I haven't worked since 2007. And I've always been a reader. Now that I'm not working and the, our kids are growing up and they have careers and families of their own, 
and it's just my wife and me here in this house and I get up in the morning and I read and I write and I read and I write and I read and I write and I don't really like doing anything else. Like I said, I don't have friends. I'm not social. If I go anywhere, I go to the book nook. I go grocery shopping with my wife. I go for a walk, maybe in some park. I go down the street and have dinner with our oldest son and his wife, Emily, and our two grandchildren. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, I go to thrift stores. And uh, that's about it. I don't really like leaving the house. I like being here. I like quiet. I don't watch TV. I'm not into movies. I do watch, I do keep track of what's in, going on in movies because I'm a student of pop culture, American pop culture. I do keep track of music and literature and movies and art that's going on in America. But basically, I'm just a man who likes to sit in silence and read and write, read the Bible, study the Bible, and uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> That's the way it goes. So I'm never really alone. I mean, I know I'm in the presence of God. I know I'm united to Christ in saving faith. I know I'm indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I know that I'm a temple of the living God. I know that I'm to live in the light of His presence and seek to worship Him and to love Him. But sometimes I get, you know, like I said, I get kind of uptight and pissed and angry. And sometimes I feel kind of sick about everything. And sometimes I wake up dreading stuff. And maybe it's the bad weather today, you know, being dreary and dark and rainy and wet. Maybe the weather does affect my mood. I don't know. But I got to sign off now. I, got, I told my wife I mopped the floors, the kitchen and bathroom floors, and I got a vacuum and brush my teeth, and then I'll uh, sit and read and go to bed. I always go to bed around 11, 11.30. So I hope you're having a good week. They had a good weekend. Thank you for new subscribers. Thank you for your comments. I don't know how some people who have 6,000, 8,000 subscribers can respond to every single comment. I mean, I get four or five comments, and I got to really scratch my head sometimes to come up with something intelligent. And I just don't want to just take the comment lightly. I want to take it seriously. So I wonder how somebody who has 6,000, 8,000, 30,000 subscribers can respond to comments. Now, so do you who comment, do you really feel bad if I don't respond to your comments? What do you expect of, of somebody when you comment? Do you expect a comment? If you don't get a comment back, a response, do you feel kind of like ripped off or you feel ignored or you feel like this person just kind of shrugged you off? How, how do you feel about that? Now, I like comments. If I had 10,000, 30,000, I would try to comment to every single comment because I really, that's one reason why I like being on YouTube is interacting with people all over the world about books and about literature and about Christianity and about walking with Jesus as your friend. So anyway, I'll stop my rambling and I will sign off. I might do a good, my wife works works tonight. She's off tomorrow night. No, she's not off tomorrow night. She works tomorrow night. But someone asked me to do a video about an April wrap up. So I've been thinking about doing a wrap up, looking through the month of April and what I read and just commenting a little bit on what I've read. I might do that. So I got a book coming in the mail tomorrow. I might show it tomorrow. So I hope you had a, a good weekend, that you have a good new week. And until next time, bye.